Hello everyone. In the previous video, we talked about how can you get a 100% discount on your Microsoft examination. And in the same video, I explained you how can you schedule and book for a Microsoft certification examination. So we have seen all those steps. So many people have reached out to me asking that they have not sat for a Microsoft examination and they don't know what to expect when you sit for that examination for the first time. So in this video, I'll take you through the exam simulation which show you what are the different types of questions you can see on the examination, what are the different styles of questions you can expect on the examination, or how can you navigate between these options which you get on the examination as well. So without wasting any more time, let's get into it. So Microsoft have created a simulation environment for the examination. You can access the site by going into ak.ms slash examdemo.com. So when you start your examination, this is the first page you get. Basically, it talks about the examination agreement. All you have to do is scroll down to the bottom of the window, click yes. On top of the page, you can see how much time you have left to go through the pre-checks. This is not the actual examination time though. So click next. This is where you get information about what examination you are sitting for. For you, it might be AZ-900, AZ-104 or AZ-204, etc. And additionally, on this particular page, you get information about how much time you have for this examination, number of questions you can expect on this particular exam, what's the minimum score you need to pass the examination. Click next. Again, this explains about the timing. You can learn about the keyboard shortcuts, etc. And after you read through it, click next. All right, so this is where the real examination is going to start. So it is going to tell you how much time you have and number of questions you can expect. So for most of the Microsoft examination, you can expect questions between 40 and 60. Click next. And like I said, this is not the real examination. This is how exactly the real examination is going to look like. So what I'm going to take you through is a simulation environment or a sandbox environment. So click next to start the examination. All right. So this is how the real examination is going to look like on the top you would see the question number. So what question you are on and how many questions left to complete the whole examination. So just below the question number, you have a couple of important options available. The first one is review later. So while you are going through this particular question, if you are not quite sure about the answer, you can always mark the question for review. That gives you an ability to go back to the question after you complete with the whole question set. I use this option all the time. So rather than me wasting time overthinking about a single question, I just click on that particular question for review for later and I come back to the question which I'm doubtful of. The second option is leave a feedback. So if you mark a question for a feedback, you can give a feedback to Microsoft regarding a particular question or what you have thought of that question or you feel like there is something wrong with the question or uh, there is something not appropriate with the answer options given. All of this can be done by selecting the option leave the feedback. Now let's look at the other options. On the bottom of the screen, there is a help option which gives you information about the examination format, the type of questions, things like that. If you want to do a quick calculation, you can click on the calculator. That gives you an ability to use a calculator within the examination construct. If you feel like the color scheme of the examination is not adequate, you have an ability to change the contrast of your choice. I think there is only three or four options available. So you have to basically pick and choose from that option available. And if you want to start over, click on reset. This gets you an ability to start over all over again. Now let's understand the different types of questions you can expect on the real examination. The first question what you see over here is a multiple choice question. So in this type of question, read out the question, you will have multiple options. Pick the right option which you find is relevant for that particular question. And once you select the answer, go to the bottom of the screen and click next to go to the next question. This is again a multiple choice question, but very important information over here is you need to select multiple answers. So not one answer. So if you only select one answer, you only get you only get partial points on that particular question. So in this question, it says that you have to choose two answers. So I'm going to choose two answers. Click next. So the third question type, what you see over here is another common set of questions you can get is called drag and drop. So basically you have to drag and drop the answer to the answer area. And please do make sure to complete 
all the answer in that question area. All right, so that's how you answer the drag and drop question. So I'm going to click next. The fourth type of question is build list. You basically go and read the question and from the options given, you have to build the list. Sometimes you have to choose the answers based on the right sequence. So I have to pick up the right five answers and put that in the sequence on the next screen. So you select the action from the left hand side or click the arrow button to move this question to the right hand answer side. The next question type is active screen. In the active screen, there is an answer area where you have an option to select option within the screen itself. So I can go to the active screen area and I can click and it will give you option to pick an answer. So I'm going to select an answer and similarly, I can scroll down and I can click on other options as well. So in the question itself, it will tell you what to do. So in this question, it is telling me which option should you choose to achieve the goal. So if the answer is by selecting Windows Vista and selecting all these answers is the right answer, which I am thinking, I can select all of that and click next. So that's how the active screen work. So the question number six show you another type of active screen. So instead of showing a graphic element, in this question, it is asking you to complete a statement or make choices using an interactive element. So I can scroll down, read all the question on the answer area. I can choose a statement whether that is right or not. So I have multiple options on the drop down. I select an appropriate answer and that's how I complete this active screen. So click next. The seventh type of question is hot area. On the hot area type questions, you get clickable areas on the work area. So let's assume remote desktop services is the right answer which I think about. I can click on the answer or I can click on the work area to complete the answer. So once I feel like, okay, this is the right answer, I can move on to the next question. Eighth type of question is case study. This is very important and this is where you can score maximum number of points because most of the case studies comes with at least four questions or sometimes it can have up to eight questions on a single case study. So on the left hand side of the case study, you have overview which explain you what is the case study, what is the company all about and it explain you different scenarios within that company like active directory environment system center infrastructure how is the application look like what are the problem statements then one thing which i pay attention multiple times is the requirement i go through these business goals planned changes technical requirement application requirements multiple times so that i can relate that with the question so i go back and forth between these case study requirements and the questions after I read through it, I can go back to the question, read again and pick the right answer from the options which is given below. I think on this particular sandbox environment, there is only one question, but on the real case study, expect multiple questions within a single case study. After you answer the case study, click next. Ninth question type is exhibit type of question. So on the exhibit type of question, you have a question you can read and then there is an exhibit. So click on exhibit which show you a particular graphic which you can actually thoroughly study and go back to the question again that is something to do with the exhibit and based on the exhibit and the question you pick the right or the appropriate answer from the option given. And the last question style is multiple exhibits. So in this scenario you have a question and you have multiple exhibits. You can see that there is a policy editor, hash policy, hash blocks, and each exhibit is showing you different configurations what is assigned on that particular system. So you go and read the question and go back and forth between these exhibits. And based on the option given, there is a statement is given. So you have to read the statement and choose whether that statement is true, then you select yes, or the statement is wrong, but then you select no by going through the exhibit and the question. So these are the different style of question you can expect on that examination. After you complete all the question, you click next. Okay, now you have completed answering all the questions. If you have missed answering any questions, you will be able to see that on the unanswered section and you can click on that 
go to the question where you have not answered and you can complete the answer if you remember i have marked one question for review so you can mark multiple questions for review if you are not sure about the answer now i have plenty of time left to finish the examination this is a perfect opportunity to go back to the questions which i'm not quite sure about so click on the question which you marked for review that takes you back to the question you can read that question again change your answer and you can complete the whole set it says that okay i have completed everything i don't want to review it again and you can click on finish it is asking you again once you click s yes, this is going to end the examination so you won't be able to go back and change any of the responses you have given so i don't want to do that i'm going to click yes if you do want to give any comment to microsoft this is where you can give that so giving a feedback is by clicking on click give feedback so you can select the type of feedback you want to give so there are a lot of options here so based on any of these criteria you can give the feedback to microsoft and type in your response to microsoft and click on submit that's how you give a feedback to microsoft so after you complete all the reviews and the feedback you come to this page which says that okay you have answered all the questions there is nothing to review and nothing to comment click on finish and click yes and click next and then you will get your results on your results page you get an information about your registration number the date when you sat for the examination your ncid your results its pass or fail so each examination have different modules which you have to go through and examination performance is based on how you answered your questions on each of these module so you get to know that which area you need to work on or which area you are really comfortable with after that you can always go to microsoft learning dashboard and download your transcripts or your certificates or badges as well so i hope the information provided in this video is helpful and i will see you on the next one until then take care